Hi guys, this is Christian from Zack Audio and today I would like to talk a little bit about our newest firmware update of the Sequencer firmware version 1.5. So um, the first thing that has changed with version 1.5 are the store and the load menus. Now it's not possible anymore to exit the menu with clicking the same button because clicking the button while you're in the menu has been assigned to new functions. Please use the exit button to exit the menu or just uh, select a different menu like the global menu. Okay, um, in the store menu for example we have reassigned pressing the button as a safety function to uh, prevent accidental overrides uh, of your patterns. It's not possible anymore to simply click a pattern and have it saved. You see it stays on the one. Because now you have to hold the store button while you press the pattern button to store the pattern. You see the LCD quickly shows store and uh, now only now it's stored. This has been done to further separate it from the load menu where you can still just click the pattern to load the pattern immediately. The load menu, um, you cannot use this to exit the load menu anymore because um, holding the load uh, button has now a different function. We've added a new functionality that you can load the patterns without affecting the mixer mutes. So now when you hold the load button and press the mixer button at the same time, you toggle this functionality. Like you see this LED is coming on and off. So when it's off, it's the same as before. You hit a pattern, it loads, and it will load all the parameters in this pattern, including the mixer settings. If you toggle this functionality and so that this LED is on, now when you load a pattern, it will load all pattern uh, data without the mixer settings. So the mixer that you've just adjusted will stay the same, but you load all the nodes and all the other parameters you load by clicking this button, except for the mixer settings. This is great for jamming live. When you want, uh, after loading the patterns, you want to go into mixer mode and then uh, toggle your mixer settings, your mutes, and it will not be affected by loading the new patterns. The next functionality I want to show you is uh, we've added the possibility to preview the parameter settings without changing them. So usually now we're in node pitch in track two, usually when you turn an encoder, you will change the parameter of this encoder, like in this, in this aspect, uh, it's the node setting. When you would just want to know which node is playing right now, you now have the possibility to hold page left while turning an encoder and it will show you the value in the LCD without changing anything. This works for all the parameters and it also works for the global settings. So if I just want to know how many BPM we have right now, I hold page left, turn the BPM knob and it shows me the 90 without changing anything. If I want to change it, I just let go of the button and then I can adjust the BPM value. This works with all the settings in the global menu. The next new feature I want to demonstrate is the monitoring function for the tap right mode. This lets you monitor a sequence of notes in real time before recording it. The way it works is in instrument select mode, um, the tap right button now cycles through the different modes. So if I press it, I'm now in instrument select mode. If I press it once, I go into monitoring mode. I can practice my sequence. Uh, once I'm happy with it, I press it again. I go into recording mode. I record the sequence and then I press it again and I'm back to the original instrument select mode. Let me demonstrate this quickly.
Another new feature for version 1.5 is that we've added extensive MIDI remote controllability through MIDI CC messages. This means that you can send MIDI control change messages from an external device to the sequencer and trigger functions of the sequencer through those messages. For a complete list of available MIDI remote commands, please see the updated manual page 35. For this example, I have mapped um, several commands for the mixer to this nanopad here. Um, as a disclaimer, you have to know that the nanopad does not have a standard MIDI check, so it's not connected directly to the sequencer, but it's connected to a computer, and the computer is hooked up to the sequencer via a standard MIDI USB interface. Um, also, because the nanopad does not speak the same, um, has, does not have the same message format as the sequencer. Uh, there is some remapping of CCs going on in the computer. Okay, um, so for this I have mapped the drum mixer functions to the first 12 buttons of the nanopad and the last four buttons are for the track mutes. So you see now when I press the pad on the nanopad the, the mixer channel is being triggered and also for the track mutes. So I turn all tracks off, I start with the drums, bass, all the single drum mutes, kick and snare. Last but not least, we have added a new routing options to the track settings. This option is uh, found in the global menu under MIDI out AB and in addition to, to the known settings AB and AB, you now have the routing setting in. This setting allows you to route the output of a track back to the sequencer's MIDI input internally. This can be used in conjunction with the new MIDI remote controllability to control one track's parameters through another track, or in essence to modulate one track sequence from another track internally. It is also useful in conjunction with the transpose feature. To give you a quick demonstration, we have set up uh, the sequence right now that in track 1 it's a regular drum track and in track 3 it's a, a regular synthesizer track but track 2 is using the new routing setting and it doesn't produce output on the MIDI outs but its output is being routed back internally. I'll show you this um, in the global menu. We have MIDI out AB and if I check the parameter it says it's going back to the input. Also in global menu uh, we can check the MIDI control alpha of track 2 and we see it's CC9 which um, controls the sequence start parameter. Now we check what's, what values are in MIDI control alpha in track 2 and we see that there are four values 64, 72, 80 and 88 which according to the manual um, control the, the sequence start of track 3. Okay, now if we go to track 3 and look at the sequence start and uh, play the sequence, we see that the sequence start changes in according to the step that track 2 is in. Okay, that's it for today. I'm hoping you'll enjoy the new features. 
If you want to leave feedback, please use the comment section below or visit our user forum on sacaudio.com. Thanks for watching.